Hey everybody, welcome back to the Pet Food Puzzle Guy, uh, where we take all the different pieces of pet food marketing and try to put them together to make a clear picture and a clear understanding just the same way you'd put the pieces of a puzzle together. So that's why we're here. Uh, I appreciate my whole community out there. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. And I know there's new people all the time, so I wanted to explain what the puzzle guy, what that means. So uh, today I'm not going to show any numbers, not going to show a bunch of charts. I'm actually going to talk about something that uh, we're going to talk about your veterinarian. Now, I don't want to put, I hate putting words in people's mouths or, or representing them or misrepresenting them, but I've been working with veterinarians for 34 years, um, and I hear this all the time, I still do. Uh, Eve, one of our great subscribers, um, she actually commented that her vet mentioned this the other day. So, so what is it? What is the one topic that veterinarians really don't want to talk to their clients about, okay? Um, it, the number one, there's a few, but there's the one that's number one. They would rather go to a family reunion and talk about Donald Trump or go to a family reunion and bring up uh, Catholics versus Protestants, that they would get less emotion going through that than they would bringing up this one topic. So stick with me, we'll go through and kind of take a look at it. So you guessed it, the number one thing that a veterinarian these days doesn't want to talk about is pet food or nutrition. Um, it is just, it's just amazing. They have all this education. They have, uh, many of them have all this experience. Uh, they're, com they have a commitment to veterinary science, to the veterinary, uh, profession. They do continuing ed all the time. I mean, they are totally devoted to what they do, but nowadays they cannot compete with call it either Dr. Google or call it just the social media monster. Uh, we're going to not get into Dr. Du uh, Google because that kind of gets into all the other aspects of healthcare. I just want to stick with social media and what I call the social media monster because veterinarians now, they would love to talk nutrition to you. They really would. Now, there's a couple things. Time nowadays, especially post-COVID, it's really hard. They don't have a lot of time with each client. That really stinks. And uh I hate it set that it's that way and so do the veterinarians, but it's it's kind of what's going on now. You know, they're seeing 10, 12, 15 patients a day. It's, um, you know, it's kind of rough. So to get over to a great conversation about nutrition, it's really hard. And, and I know some that are, I loved working with a few doctors that were really into nutrition. It was their thing. They really took a very holistic approach that nutrition definitely could help, not just pills or surgery, things like that. And uh, they're, they're even saying they don't have a lot of time. So that is one. But the other is the social media monster. They don't, and when I joked when I said, you know, it's like bringing up Trump at a, at a family reunion. But that's how it is. They really are, uh, I will call it nutrition fatigue, if you want to call it that. Uh, it's actually a word used out there among veterinarians. And it's just that they bring up something that, that uh, a food or especially a therapeutic change, you know, therapeutic diet. And right away, they just get lambasted that that's horrible. I've been on the internet. Uh, what, a, what a veterinarian hates hearing. And again, I, I feel a little uncomfortable talking for veterinarians. So those of you vets that are out there hearing this, hopefully this resonates with you to some degree that I'm, I'm being accurate. Please let me know. But um, the worst thing they want to hear is, well, I did my own research. Now, I know that sounds terrible. We want clients that are dedicated to their animals and are doing research and want to be educated and all that. I understand that. The problem is social media is not the place to get educated. Okay, I have learned that. Uh, YouTube is probably the worst place to get educated. Of course, I'm saying that, and here I am with a YouTube channel. But <clears throat> trust me, your veterinarian knows a lot more than you do coming from social media. And I, I hear it all the time from the comments now on my videos that I'm so confused, I'm so overwhelmed, I'm, I'm just anxious, I don't know what, if I'm doing something wrong. Why? Because you're listening to all the sources of information on YouTube, the YouTube influencers, I guess, whatever you wanna call them, and it's just driving you crazy, and it really doesn't have to, but everybody's selling something, everybody's pushing either themselves or a diet or a book or something like that. And uh, I remember it was the nutritionist, head nutritionist at Angel Memorial. Um, this was this was years ago, and she said, uh, "Here she is, the head nutritionist." And she said, uh, in a quote, I, "I'm kind of, I'll well, probably mess this up a little bit, but she said she spends more time debunking bad information 
than delivering, you know, sound information. She, she's just bombarded. Why? Because of the internet. And now with social media, it, it's just a firestorm. It's, it's just a monster of, of misinformation. So, which is the whole reason for my channel and for all of us being here together as a community. So we will do our best to fight it. But nutrition fatigue. The veterinarian brings up, you know, the veterinarian is not a retailer. I, I was a retailer, a pet store retailer. That's how maybe one day I'll tell my, my story of how I ended up going from a, a cabinet maker or a guy fresh out of the army to uh, to be in the pet food puzzle guy. That might be a interesting video for four or five of you. <laughs> but anyway, um, they are not retailers. You walk into a retail store, I can tell you I was a retail the guy, <clears throat> I am going to find out what it is you want. I'm going to sell it to you. You want all natural? I'm going to sell it to you. You want uh, fancy colors and, and flavors? I'm going to sell it to you. Wh whatever it is you want, I mean, unless it's something I believe is just totally horrible. Um, but I'm just going to kind of give you what you want. A veterinarian has a much more noble responsibility, okay? Their commitment is what is best for your pet. Now, I realize cost comes into that, and they have to play this this uh, balancing act of, well, yeah, all these things are available, but they're very expensive. Maybe we could do this instead or do this first. Or we'll try this diagnosis. I mean, they really have a much tougher job than human doctors do, <clears throat> especially because their patients can't talk to them. But um, money is, is always a big issue. Veterinarians hate when they can't do something they really want to do for a pet just because of money. But they they have a lot of costs. You could just imagine the costs in a veterinary clinic. So it's not like they can just you know, uh, do, uh, you know, free, free work all the time, as some people think they should. So anyway, back to the, the food thing. Um, they want to recommend a diet. They have all the, the years of experience using this diet. They have sat through lectures with the board certified nutritionists that actually personally, the ones that actually made that diet, that did the research, made that finished product, tested it, saw how well it works, whether it's renal disease, whether it's food allergies, environmental allergies, dissolving urinary stones, uh, relieving arthritis, uh, um, you know, I could just go on and on. These are the people that did it, and these practicing veterinarians get to meet them at, at continuing ed. They can read their peer-reviewed studies. I mean, they're, they're, they're into it. That's, they're into science and they're into animals. That's why they're veterinarians, right? But that doesn't count anymore. That's not as good as, well, I read this blog, and this guy said this, or I'm, I'm on this group, and everybody on that group just says how awful this brand is or whatever. That's what your veterinarian is up against. And sometimes you folks, and you know who you are, you get pretty darn passionate. I know I do on my channel, and veterinarians tell me, you know, it's gotten to the point where, you know, now therapeutic recommendations, they're, they're probably going to make them because it's so important to the pet, but they're kind of making it like this. Like, I really think we need to switch on to this renal diet from Hills or Royal Canin or Purina, and they're they're ready. They're ready for the the onslaught of, oh my goodness, that can't be, that stuff's just garbage, blah, blah, blah. I was on the internet, I'm on this group, and we do research. Just imagine you're seeing, again, 10 to 15 pets a, a, a day, and you're trying to help these pet owners, and, and that's with therapeutic, that's with truly these diets could save your pet's life, but instead of believing me, the veterinarian, with every all the, the resources I have available, no, you're going to believe this group of people that have absolutely no credentials whatsoever, absolutely know nothing of what, they what they're talking about, much of what they're saying they got from another Facebook group that was saying the same thing. I mean, talk about the, what is it, the lemmings going off the cliff. I should even put an illustration up because that's, that's what's going on now with social media and pet food. So what's going on with YouTube and pet food or in pet nutrition. It, it's the lemmings. They're just following each other right off the end. Now there's there's people in the back pushing everybody or leading. No, they wouldn't be leading. They're not going off the cliff. They're the ones making money and getting popular and you know, you see their names everywhere because they're just so wonderful. Uh, no, they're in the back of the crowd making sure everybody goes and they feed, feed them this stuff and let them go off the ledge, okay? Your veterinarians in the worst place. They're in the front lines. I'm safe with my little phone camera here sitting back here and, and I can tell you guys all this stuff and sure you can send nasty comments, which very few people do, thank you. Um, but the veterinarian, they're in 
they're at the front line. They're trying to do their best. They're using every resource they have available to, to do the best. And then they recommend a food or they see, you know, for, for the longest time, blue buffalo, they called it blue diarrhea. You, you could have called up 10 doctors and nine out of 10 would, if you said, what, what's a food that's causing issues with the pets you're seeing? It definitely would be blue buffalo would be on the top of the list. I don't know why. Uh, it's not one of the worst foods out there. I've, I've analyzed it. I've compared it even on this on the channel. Um, but yeah, urinary stones, diarrhea, stuff like that. But yet you'll find tons of people that did fine on blue buffalo. And that's always, you know, so veterinarians, even the ones that really aren't into nutrition, they can help but pick up the trends as to what diets seem to do well out there with my dog and cat patients and which ones seem to have issues okay they're not following all the trends I, I say they're not following all the trends but they actually are because veterinarians will tell me they can tell me what's new on social media why because their clients come in and oh you know grain free was the topic for a while all the clients come in should i feed grain free and then of course when the grain free scare came now veterinarians were getting flooded with should i be on grain free should i not now it oh is kibble bad should i not feed kibble uh i heard it's this i heard that so you could probably get a, a handful of veterinarians together and just say what are your clients saying and you'd be able to find what they're saying matches perfectly to the social media monster and what's the latest bs out there and that's where your your doctor's at and so nutrition fatigue it's really a shame because nutrition in fact and i'm sure you're on this channel so you believe it nutrition really does matter and my channel is is committed and and, and animal doc ray uh, rea animal doc ray uh she's a veterinarian and has all the credentials and she's awesome and spreading the same good information about pet food and nutrition I'm on my channel doing it. Uh, there's a few more out there I'm going to be sharing, but when I find a good one, I'm going to share it because we, we have got to take back the nutrition education and, and help pet parents not get caught up in this marketing. And, and it, it's, it's really, it's alarming because it's so unhealthy. It's so untrue. It's so misleading. And it, it just, it's my motivation for doing this channel. So what can I tell you? When you go to your veterinarian, please, if you have strong opinions about certain things, just try to, as the nutritionist at Angel Memorial said, consider the source. Just because you read it on the internet does not make it that it's true. Just because the person was totally sincere because their dog died and, you know, whatever, that still is not science. That's not evidence-based science, okay? So I, I put this out there, uh, and, and I hope your vet is recommending nutrition, but if they're not, there is a valid reason. One, they either ran out of time that day, which sadly does happen, but the other is nutrition fatigue. The veterinary community is, is afraid to bring up nutrition the way they want to because social media has you guys so trained to just fight back that, well, I did my own research and, well, that can't possibly be true that that prescription diet is good because I went to this group and it's just, it's just crap. It's just awful. Or I watched this video. Okay. So, um, again, I, I'm just putting it out there because it, it's such a, it, it's becoming such an issue. And, uh, I, I hate to see it because veterinarians, even the ones again that aren't that into nutrition, they are. They see the trends. They see, hey, you know what, Purina Dog Chow is do, is doing fine. If you want to spend more than that, you know what, it's okay. You don't have to be guilted or shamed into. You need to buy this boutique food, you know, that has protein three times the amount that your pet needs. You know, those are the kind of things a vet can tell you. Hey, you know what? That's a little bit of marketing. Uh, there's really nothing behind that. That's why these are the foods I recommend. And when you see those foods in the clinic, I know I hear this all the time. Well, it's because they get kickbacks, which of course is so absurd. I was a veterinary rep for 34 years. If I could have just given kickbacks to my vets to to use food man, I would have done it. That would have been easy, okay? No, they have to pay for those diets just like everybody else and make a tiny bit of profit when they for all the handling and everything they do, filling up their back rooms and all. So no, there's no kickbacks. Why do they use the food? Again, because they're trying to help your animal and they've done enough research and been to enough lectures and seen enough evidence in the, in the animals to know, hey, this is what I want you going home with. Yes, some are better at explaining that than others. Absolutely. That's just the way it is. We're all different.
but that's why they do it. And, and, and I love the, oh, well, veterinarians are biased because, you know, with Hills, Royal Canaan, and, 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 uh, and Hill, or Purina, Purina, Hills, and Royal Canaan. Why, oh, they're so biased. Well, you know, sometimes bias is a healthy thing. It depends what your bias is based on. If your bias is based on the fact, well, here's the companies that spend the millions of dollars on research every year through the decades. They have, they're paying for the top board certified nutritionists to work in, in these, these plants, or not the plants, the, the research facilities that walking into is like walking into NASA. They're coming up with all these discoveries for renal disease, for allergies, for arthritis, for dissolution of urinary stones. I mean, on and on and on. They're the people doing it. So I'm a practicing veterinarian that doesn't know any of this stuff. I'm just, you know, I'm into just general practitioner. Guess what? I would really like to sit down with those people and hear what they have to say, to see the research that they did to come up with the diet and see the results of that diet. And what I always told my veterinarians, I love all that too, but the best test for me as a Hills rep was when those doctors would use the diets and see the same results with their clients. I, I always told them when there was a new diet, what I'm excited to see, great, all the research, everything, I want that. I want to see when you tell me, hey, we put that dog on GI biome, and that German Shepherd had diarrhea for a year and a half, and over the weekend, 24 hours on the diet, and the lady called us and said that I, we just went out and picked up poop in the backyard for the very first time, okay? That's, that's what I want to hear. Or, hey, my cat's blood value is just normalized. She's eating again. She's actually starting to run around again, even with renal disease, okay? So that's what veterinarians see all the time. But yet, what do I hear on, on these YouTube uh, channels? Oh, they're they're just biased because you know they like those companies because they get kickbacks, or they're the only, that's the only thing they hear. Well, who do you want them to be listening to? The people that make those diets, or these YouTube influencers that have absolutely zero, and when I say zero, a big fat zero credentials as far as into nutrition. And you guys. You know their names. I'm not going to say. I'm not even going to give them credit, but you know the doctors out there. A few female doctors I can think of right off the top of my head that just say the most ludicrous, ridiculous, irresponsible things. And yet, oh my goodness, the followers that come. Again, the social media monster. So please, when you're going to your veterinarian, give them, cut them some slack. Okay, hear what they have to say, what they're reasoning is is based on and trust me they are not biased they're not stupid uh they're not greedy they're not making a fortune or getting pick kickbacks because they recommend the food um they're just doing their best and and we need to get back to that and stop listening to people that have absolutely no idea what they're talking about and that's my rant for today you guys have a great day appreciate you being here